my name is Alexander Todorov and I'm professor of psychology at Princeton University. I study face perception and specifically in the last 10-15 years I have studied uh, the kinds of uh, first impressions people form uh, from uh, facial appearance of strangers. And surprisingly uh, we form these uh, impressions e extremely rapidly. So we have done studies where we could uh, see a face you've never seen before for as little as less than one tenth of a second and that gives enough time to most people to form an complex impressions like whether the person appears trustworthy, whether the person appears competent, whether the person appears aggressive and so on and so on. Not only that we form these impressions very rapidly but also these impressions uh, affect important social outcomes and one of our very first studies actually we show that we can predict the electoral success of American politicians based on naive judgments of participants who didn't even know they were judging politicians of how competent they appear to be. So using this a very, very uh, simple judgment, whether the person is competent or not, we could predict about 70% of the election outcomes for U.S. Senate races. And this has been replicated in a number of countries. Another thing that we have done in my lab was to actually build mathematical models that visualize our stereotypes of facial appearance. Because after all, all of these inferences of whether the person is a trustworthy or not, whether the person is competent, simply reflect our prejudices and biases. So they're in a nutshell stereotypes. And by using uh, statistical models and uh, we can and human judgments of faces we can actually build uh, uh, visual, visualizations where you can play a video and you can see oh here the uh, facial features that change as we perceive faces to become more trustworthy uh, a lot of this is actually reflected in my book uh, face value where we uh, describe the basic research but also much of the history of the pseudoscience of physiognomy as ironically, the modern uh, science of first impression is really linked uh, to the history of the pseudoscience of physiognomy. Physiognomists in the past um, believed that you can read um, the character of people from their facial appearance. So in other words, it's not only that whenever you're making an inference based on the appearance of a stranger that they are trustworthy or not, it's not just your stereotype but it, there's actually ground truth and um, we've conducted many studies showing that in fact uh, there's very little in terms of uh, accuracy of these judgments so the fact that you're thinking that the person appears trustworthy or not doesn't really mean that the person is trustworthy or not you really need to have better evidence than their facial appearance and here uh, with a couple of things to think about why these judgments uh, not necessarily accurate, especially when they are based on simple images. Think about of your own pictures. I'm sure that in modern times pretty much everybody has hundreds and hundreds if not thousands of different images and you most likely, unless you're completely narcissistic, don't like them equally well. So the images, pictures that make you look good and images that make you look bad and this is exactly how first impressions work. There could be images that make you look super attractive and competent and images that you wouldn't look so well. And, and, and so these sim this images, a simple starting image is never a faithful representation of a person's face under most circumstances and could be deeply misleading as a source of information what the person is like. Another way to think about is if you look at what are the different ingredients of the stereotypes. For example, for trustworthiness, one of the important features is whether the person is smiling. It doesn't have to be an explicit green, but subtle smile, faces that look kind of relaxed and happy are perceived as more trustworthy. And faces that look angry or disgruntled are perceived as untrustworthy. Notice that Emotional expressions are important because they signal our mental states and behavioral intentions at the moment of the interaction. So in a sense, an inference about the current state of the person might be accurate here and now, but it would be a lousy inference to think that the person is like that 
in general because there are many reasons to be happy or unhappy. Maybe you didn't have a good night's sleep. Maybe you had an argument with your partner or a colleague. There are hundreds of situational influences which shape the way we feel right here at the moment. So to think that facial appearance gives you a, a, is a reliable source of information about what the person is like in general, it's an illusion. And it's an illusion to a large extent based on our experience with familiar faces. And these are very important distinctions between faces of people that we know well, like our relatives, friends, and celebrities, and faces of people we don't know at all. We often, until about maybe 10 years ago, we would say that uh, our brains are amazing and there's no computer system that is better than us than recognizing faces. This is no longer true. But it's not that we are special at recognizing faces. We are special at recognizing familiar faces. You can take a familiar face, you can stretch it, you can squash it, you can make it in a very, very low grainy resolution that you can barely see it. It's a face and we could still recognize it. But with unfamiliar faces, if we are just shown many images of different people, we cannot even sort them out in terms of the people they're representing. And the most common error uh, in false, uh, false convictions in the legal system, it's actually eyewitness testimony. Because most of the time, if you're identifying a culprit and the culprit is a stranger, there's a huge amount of error. Uh, and when you look at a familiar face, not only you recognize the face, but this recognition comes with knowledge for free. Uh, you know who the person is, uh, your feelings, whether you like them or whether you dislike them, knowledge about their background, all of this comes free in the process of recognition. But there's nothing like this that happens when you're looking at the face of a stranger. The only thing that this image unlocks, it's our own prejudices and biases.